Hello and welcome to our FLASNOR series. In this series of lectures, we are going to discuss on very high yield clinical topics with their proper clinical correlations. This is FLASH note 6. In this particular FLASH note, we are going to discuss on astrocytoma. So before starting about astrocytoma, we need to understand the basic functions of astrocytes that is they help in the glial cell formation, they help in the formation of blood-brain barriers and sometimes they help in the homeostasis of the various neurotransmitters and ions like potassium. So astrocytoma can be typically defined as the proliferation of astrocytes and in case of children we call it pilocytic astrocytoma. And in case of adult, we call it glioblastoma multiform. So these are the two extremes classes of the astrocytoma. So pilocytic astrocytoma is the most benign form, whereas the glioblastoma multiform is the most malignant form. We will see shortly how this grading has been done. So it has been graded based on the histological differentiation. Grade 1 tumors are called as pilocytic astrocytoma. Grade 2 are called diffuse astrocytoma. Grade 3 anaplastic astrocytoma. And grade 4 are termed as glioblastoma. Here, grade 1 and grade 2 tumors are the very benign form of the tumors. Whereas, grade 3 and grade 4 tumors are the most malignant form of the tumors and out of, out of which grade 4 is of the highly aggressive term. So here I want to focus on point that grade 4 tumors, this glioblastoma has mean survival life of less than 1 year sometimes limiting up to 6 months. So this is a very highly aggressive form of the tumor and they are the most common primary tumor in case of adult and pilocytic astrocytoma are the most common primary brain tumor in case of children. So we will uh, start our discussion with pilocytic astrocytoma and we will finally talk about glioblastoma with their gross and microscopic appearances. Starting with pilocytic astrocytoma, we just talked they are the low-grade astrocytoma in case of children and they are well circumscribed being of benign tumors and they have a very good prognosis. So the general rule of thumb is that in case of children, the tumors are generally limited in fratentorally and in case of adult, the uh, tumors are generally present supratentorally. So this is the tentorium and the tumors of adult are generally present above this tentorium and the, and the tumor of child are generally present below this tentorium. This pilocytic astrocytoma they can be present supratentorally as well but the most significant point of pilocytic astrocytoma is that the tumor forms the mirror cystic lesion. So a tumor mass with the cystic lesion on brain MRI shows the highly uh, suggestive of the pilocytic astrocytoma and the pilocytic astrocytoma in case of child are generally present in cerebellum. So the tumors of astrocytes in case of children are generally present in, in cerebellum but the same tumor that is the astrocytoma in case of adult they are generally present in cerebrum. Regarding origin of the astrocytum, of course, they are of astrocyte in origin and they are positive for GFAP. GFAP are the intermediate filament and they stand for a glial fibrillary acidic protein. Regarding microscopy, in case of pilocytic astrocytoma, we can see the eosinophilic and corkscrew fibers. So here we can see eosinophilic and corkscrew fibers. Again, here we can see eosinophilic corkscrew fibers. We just talked about the cystic and the solid uh, intermixed lesion of pyrocytic astrocytoma. Regarding glioblastoma multiform, we, we have already mentioned that this glioblastoma multiform has a very poor prognosis. That is uh, the mean survival time the uh, range between uh, within a year. So we need to understand how these uh, very highly aggressive form of the tumors are actually originating. So one of the very high yield point is that there will be the amplification of EGFR gene. So the EGFR gene stands for epidermal growth factor receptor. So the uh, amplification of EGFR gene, they produce the more number of receptors. So the amplification of gene produce more number of receptors and when there is a production of more number of receptors, the cell becomes highly sensitive to epidermal growth factor and it causes the multiple proliferation of the uh, astrocytes. That's why uh, there will be the very highly aggressive form of the tumors. So EGFR gene amplification is the most 
high yield point that one could ever have in glioblastoma multiform. There are other high yield points regarding their gross and microscopic feature, which we are discussing very shortly. Regarding uh, the tumor, the tumor they can produce the midline shift. By midline shift, we mean to say that suppose this is the midline, then all these structures are shifting away from the midline, producing the distortion and expansion of the normal structure. So we need to understand about the midline shifting of the tumor masses. So uh, another reason for the midline shift is that all these tumors they generally arise in the uh, cerebrum. So because of the tumors within the cerebrum, uh, the structure structures which uh, it is suppressing upon they get shifted away from the midline regarding uh, the gross structures they can be the sites of hemorrhages and the necrosis here in the picture we can see the sites of hemorrhage here sites of necrosis here so this is highly suggestive of the glioblastoma multiform so the sites of uh, hemorrhage and necrosis within the uh, frontal lobe or within the parietal lobe of uh, that's of the cerebrum uh, and highly suggest that the, uh, grossly suggest that the tumors can be glioblastoma multiform Here again, we can see uh, the uh, glioblastoma multiform, which is showing the sites of hemorrhage and the tumors is expanding along the corpus callosum uh, like a butterfly wings pattern. That's why we call it butterfly glioma. Again, we can see butterfly glioma here. The tumors, they are found in cerebral hemispheres and they are crossing along the corpus callosum. So midline crossing of the tumors, they are highly suggestive of the butterfly glioma. Here again, butterfly glioma can be seen. So I have put the multiple pictures of butterfly glioma just to make uh, you, you remember it well. So it crosses the corpus callosum and it involves the frontal lobe, resembles the two wings of the butterfly. And we can see a solid tan tumors on the left and uh, allo necrosis on the right. Now, one of the very high yield point is that the tumors of glioblastoma multiform upon microscopy, this shows the pseudopalisading structure. By pseudopalisading structure, we mean to say that here is the central area of the necrosis of the tumor cells and they are lined upon by these viable cells. So, these viable cells, um, the uh, line, uh, the central areas of necrosis and hemorrhages and there can be microvascular proliferation as well. So, we call this pattern uh, as the uh, pseudopalisading structure. It means that these uh, viable structures are they are covering uh, these uh, uh, tumor cells or hemorrhagic cells so this is a very high yield point remember so the parasitic structures they can be seen in case of glioblastoma multiform regarding prognosis we just have talked they have a poor prognosis and even with the even if we remove the tumor there can be uh, the microscopic cells which are infiltrative and they are in, intermixed with the normal brain cells that's why they are having the worst prognosis one could ever have all right, so we have some flask quizzes here. The most common primary brain tumor in children is pilocytic astrocytoma. Tumor in adult is generally present supra or infratentorally. So in adult, they are present above the tentorium. Therefore, supra tentorally. Astrocytic tumors are GFAP positive or negative. We know that GFAP stands for glial fibrillary acidic proteins and they are the intermediate filament and hence these tumors must be GFAP positive. Eosinophilic cork screw fibers are present in pyrocytic astrocytoma. They are the horizontal fibers. Here we can see eosinophilic cork screw shaped fibers. They are the horizontal fibers in pyrocytic astrocytoma in children. Next, staging of glioblastoma multiform is Stage 4, highly malignant, made in survival, approximately one year. Pseudopalisating pattern is seen in glioblastoma multiform, which is the pleomorphic tumor cells that borders the central area of necrosis, hemorrhages, inner, or microvascular proliferation. Here we can see the pseudopalisating structure in case of glioblastoma multiform. Alright, we have few questions here so here a 56 years old woman is brought to the emergency department after a generalized tonic clonic seizure witnessed by her husband the patient has no history of seizures and other medical conditions but has been having recurrent headaches for the past several months 
on physical examination we can see mild weakness with increased deep tendon reflexes in the left upper extremity brain mri reveals a large mass in the right frontal lobe so a large mass in the right frontal lobe in case of adult um suspicion of glioblastoma multiplum of is having a very worse prognosis so let's see here on biopsy of uh, the mass uh, we can see hypercellular white matter with extensive astrocytic aberration microvascular proliferation and the area of necrosis lined by the tumor cells so area of necrosis lined by the tumor cells which are further lined by the viable cells this is the pseudopalisating structure oops is having glioblastoma multiform so what has been asked is that on molecular studies of the abnormal cells are most likely to demonstrate which of the following findings all right so the uh, patients having seizure uh, headaches uh, motor weakness brain mass composed of abnormal exercise raise this strong suspicion for glioblastoma we just talked about it so she's having of course uh, must be the abnormal production of this epidermal growth factor receptors so therefore we can give her the drugs uh, that can inhibit the epidermal growth factor receptor or receptor like an interaction like erlotinib as a part of treatment so our answer must be overexpression of epidermal growth factor receptor very high yield point this is very high yield point next question here a 62 years old man is brought to emergency department after a onset of a uh, tonic clonic seizure which is generalized in nature and his wife uh, reports that for the past several weeks she has been having episodic headaches nausea progressive weakness and headaches are particularly worse at night and occasionally awake him from sleep his other medical problems include well-controlled sdn and osteoarthritis on physical examination patient is post ectical for but follows simple commands he is admitted to the hospital for further evaluation but dies several days later due to aspiration pneumonia and septic shock on brain section obtained during the post-mortem examination is shown in the image below the patient most likely had which of the following conditions so what we need to appreciate here is that there is a localized lesion and this localized lesion is causing the midline shift so here we can see a midline shift so it is highly suggestive of the tumors within the cerebrum and the tumors within the cerebrum they can be originating from the astrocyte cells and it's having very worse prognosis it means I, I, he is having most probably glioblastoma multiform regarding brain metastasis brain metastasis are generally multifocal so here a localized lesion is found but in case of brain metastasis they are generally multiple cytic in origin so with this we end up our presentation stay tuned thank you